My brother Zand and I are nearing the end of our stay with the Bayaka of the Congo rainforest. The centerpiece of our last meal is roasted and boiled monkey. Having been cooked for at least two hours, any nasty viruses should be long dead. But the thought of eating it is utterly repulsive. Are you going to yeah, have some? I'm, I'm just trying to intellectualise it to get over my discomfort. <laughs> yeah. Can you see its little foot there? Oh, it looked, it looked like the smallest bit, and I've got a great big piece of monkey here. I really do only want a small bit. God. Well, turned out it is not. I wanted to be able to say it was like chicken, but it's not like chicken, it's like lamb. Yeah. Just as I'm beginning to accept that every available scrap of protein is vital in this environment, I get a nasty surprise. So that's interesting. I'm. I'm absolutely confident that it's not part of a monkey. I think this is a, a guinea worm, isn't it? This is the sort of worm that comes out of people's um, ankles and you have to gradually unwind it so that you don't kill it as it comes out and you get a horrible scar on the skin. Well, there we go. That's a whole new culinary experience. Not only have I eaten monkey, I've eaten monkey parasite. Zand has been giving him Genje his anti-malarial medicine three times a day. His mum Delongo is also getting vitamin pills three times a day to improve both of their iron levels. Despite our fears, this regime is happily accepted alongside the Ngangas treatments. On the morning of our last day, Zand gives him Genje a checkup. much better, isn't it? Do you think he's getting any better? Mm. 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 I mean, his, his heart rate and his breathing rate are much, much lower, which is really, really nice to see. He looks like a much brighter baby. He's just a little bit more active. It's going to be early days yet to see a really decent improvement, but to me he looks like a kid that's actually doing quite well. You're not so bad, are you? The experience has given Zand a new perspective. When I was watching the Nganga treat the child, I thought it was absolute idiocy and dripping the drops into the eyes and um, all this carry on with the bark, and I, I just thought it was all utterly, utterly stupid. And um, once I had to do it, I realised everything I was doing was very similar to him, right down to the fact that I was using what was, until very recently, a Chinese herbal medicine. And, um, and I was also giving tablets to his mother. Bayamba gave everyone eye drops, and I was giving tablets to the mother rather than the baby. And in fact, the, the huge gulf which I thought existed between the way I do medicine and the way he does medicine um, shrunk very, very rapidly. It's our last day in the forest, and the boys have taken us to a honey tree. Challenging us to see if we can make it just 15 metres up. But the gulf in our abilities is still as huge as ever. These guys have an awful lot going for them in terms of health that most people where I'm from don't. That's good, man. And they're extremely happy, much happier than people I know. And that, that does sound trite and romantic, but I really believe that is true. <laughs> Secondly, they're all immensely fit and powerful. Part of the reason for that is because you can't survive unless you are like that. They, ne they need to be in every way physically different to me. But part of the reason the guys are so happy and healthy is because the ones who couldn't be like them died in childhood. For Zand and me, the contrast between our usefulness here and our usefulness at home is staggering. I don't have a role, I, I don't do anything. I'm a, a passive observer. And I really thought by the end of the few weeks I might be able to gather honey or I might have successfully caught a crocodile. And um, even things like I thought we could distribute some kind of public health message, that I thought maybe we could teach people to boil water. I thought we could teach people to wash hands. 
is, I now realise, totally dark. And I, I don't think I have anything to offer here at all. We have been found wanting in this, one of the sickest, most attritional places on earth. Which is extremely frustrating, because it's clear from the Bayaka that if you can handle it, the forest is a great place to live. It, it is their everything. It makes their houses and it's their medicine cabinet and it's their food. Well, it's the best honey I've ever tasted. It's their shelter and um, it keeps them cool. And it shapes their bodies and shapes their lives. And everything about the Bayaka is about living in this forest. And all the diseases it presents all come as part of that, that package.